dear all i would like to welcome you all in the third session of question paper discussion in the subject environmental protection and management moving on to the discussion now we will be discussing question number 8a the question is write a note on waste minimization planning in the industry the allocated mark is 10 marks how to answer it yes first of all it is better to give a brief definition about waste minimization a waste minimization is a waste management approach that focuses on reducing the amount of toxicity of hazardous waste generated. That you can give a brief introduction, just like a uh, summary or something like that you can give, overview you can give. So later you can mention about the different type of regulation related to uh, waste minimization, like RCRA. If necessary, you can remember. Similarly, you can mention EPA. Okay, some uh, agencies which will be supporting for waste minimization. Later, you have to explain about waste minimization planning. To conduct the waste minimization planning, there are five phases. You have to mention each phases. Usually, we give two marks for writing each phases. Phase one comprises of extensive uncontrolled dumping. Second to uh, reliable collection and better landfill because uh, waste management is a challenging issue right now. Where to fill, where to fill the land. So where you are going to dispose, everything matters a lot. Moving on to third phase, separate the collection and sorting. So dry waste, wet waste, and we'll be discussing different type of classification of waste thereafter. So anyway, wet waste will be the dry waste. Some cases will be a mixed one. How to separate it? Fourth one includes expanding the recycling industry, mechanical and biological treatment facility. So recycling is very important. So we need to know about three R concept, reduce, reuse, and recycle. So that concept you have to mention in phase four. Moving on to the last phase, circular economy. So from the waste, how to generate the income? So uh, for example, we have some kind of scrap items. How to produce the uh, amount from the scrap item? We have kitchen waste, vegetable waste. How to generate the power from the waste, uh, from the kitchen waste or waste or such kind of uh, garbages? So uh, that is called a circular economy. So these are the main things which you need to mention about five phases of uh, planning five ways minimization planning in the company or an organization. So definitely you can score 10 marks without any doubt. I would like to move on. Question number 8B. Explain the following. Number one, non-conformity. Second one, rules and qualification of auditors. Very, very important. Non-conformity carries five marks. Another uh, segment, roles and qualification of auditor comprises of five marks. Total, 10 marks. So let me move on to question number 8B. Please pay attention carefully. Non-conformity means a failure to conform, a failure to follow the standard procedure which is uh, already put forward by the top management. For example, one company, they are uh, they, they could not uh, follow the, economic, uh, the environmental policy properly. Such state is known as non-conformity. So non-conformity, uh, those things will be obtained after completion of the auditing. After completion of the auditing, we will come to know that whether the environmental program has been conducted successfully or not. So that is regarding uh, non-conformity. A state where the program could not execute effectively. The meaning of non-conformity I have written in bottom. Failure to failure or refusal to conform. So how to overcome the non-conformity? So uh, to conduct the uh, management review every year uh, at a, after completion of the fiscal year, then proper internal auditing by the employee itself, then feedback from the customer, uh, that is also very important. Customer is one of the valuable uh, point uh, for the business because customer feedback, goodwill, everything matters a lot. So these are the ways to overcome the non-conformity. You can explain uh, these points definitely. Uh, there is no doubt you will get five marks. Moving on to the qualification of uh, auditors, qualification and roles. The anyway, an experienced employee, an experienced uh, worker is experienced. Uh, em, experienced employee is required for conducting the auditing. He should have a several experience. Where there are different degree program nowadays. We can see environmental science, environmental management, natural resource management. Uh, they should get a bachelor degree from any of the mentioned subject. Uh, no worries. Uh, still, you have you can if you want you can uh, work in as a work, work as a you can join as a. Uh, auditor, environmental auditor, if you complete a PG with a, a certification. PG means uh, uh, postgraduate, masters. Masters with a certification, if you have, you can definitely you can join, you can work as a auditor, environmental auditor. So professional certification is mandatory for that. After completion of PG, a certified course is uh, need to be done. 
Uh, then different certifications are there, uh, environmental professional, uh, compliance, environmental auditor, EPCEA, environmental professional, environmental management systems. In some IITs, they are actually doing uh, these kind of courses as a part of continuing education. Fine. Uh, these are the major qualifications which should be for auditors. If you write up to this, you will be getting 2.5 marks. So remaining 2.5 marks, you can write the roles and responsibility of auditors. Regular auditing, frequent visiting, then uh, your, the auditor should be a good manager. He should work with the team. He should be a team leader. Then selecting and managing the auditing team, dealing with the team, uh, dealing with the human resource. Then reviewing the operations. He should, he should have a technical knowledge to review the operations. Gathering the data, he should have a data science, scientist. So nowadays, there are different courses available for analyzing the data. So he, can, uh, he should know some uh, tools, like especially like a Microsoft Excel. And check the business record, government policies, review the emergency preparedness, what are the emergency uh, things which can be done in a company, a review management system. And uh, there are different standards for performing the review, some standard for conducting the review. Those things you should know. These are the different uh, roles of auditor. Then question number nine, let us, uh, we have completed question number eight, A and B. So after completion of question number uh, eight, we'll be moving on question number nine A. Briefly discuss the applications of environmental management system and the waste audit. Five plus five. Applications of EMS carries five marks. Another topic waste audit comprises of five marks total, 10 marks. How, how to answer it? That's a challenging. So don't worry about that. You manage within two, two to three pages, you can manage. Two pages at least you can manage for 10 marks. Don't worry about that. You have to highlight the points, important steps, important uh, like uh, what are the things you have to give the high, you have to underline it. Then only evaluator will come to know that the particular students can follow that particular topic. Yes. Moving on to question number nine. Yeah, please pay the attention carefully. So I'll be discussing question number nine. Eh? That is uh, applications of EMS and waste audit. So combined I have written. So there are around uh, 10 plus points are available. Environmental management system helps to minimize environmental effect, obviously. And also amplify the productive use. Productivity will be increased, employee satisfaction, customer satisfaction, then reduce the amount of waste, waste minimization, and a goodwill, like a, a public, a good picture from the customer side. From the society, the, the stand of the company is also getting improved. In the sense, company will be getting a goodwill. Okay. Uh, then superior understanding of the environmental impact. Uh, then uh, then the different type of uh, beneficial programs also uh, effectiveness of the entire operation, whether the operations are efficient or not. Then uh, reducing the cost, measure the success, success level year by year uh, by uh, pro doing the proper auditing. Definitely will come to know that whether the company is moving towards the success or not. Okay, these are the points you can try to add uh, applications of EMS and waste audit. This is actually regarding question number nine. You can, I think you can easily write it. Yeah, let me know if you are having any questions. Question number nine B. Explain the concept of transboundary of pollutants. What do you mean by transboundary pollutant? Transboundary means uh, there are different boundaries. A, B, C. Different states are available like A, B, C, D. So uh, the, pollu the pollutant particle will be traveling from one state to another state, from another state to another state. So irrespective of boundary, the pollutants will be traveling. That is basically called a transboundary of pollutants. First of all, I will be mentioning what do you mean by transboundary of pollution. So question number 9B, please focus question number 9B. Yes, you can see that. Yeah, first of all, I have explained what is transboundary pollution. It is a pollution that originates one country, but is able to cause damage in another country environment. For example, uh, there are two countries like uh, India, China, like uh, uh, Bangladesh. So different, different countries. From uh, if the pollu if the pol pollution that the pollutant will be traveling from one country to another country regardless of the border that is actually called transboundary phenomenon. So suppose uh, if any of the country is making severe uh, pollutant particles, severe pollution activity, definitely the nearby neighboring countries also will be affected. So it, uh, there is no restriction that only that country will suffer. It's not like that. Uh, it will spread to different countries. Okay, that is regarding the trans uh, transboundary uh, condition. So the material which will be moving from uh, one point to another point is called as uh, the transboundary pollutant. You are informed to explain the transboundary phenomenon very clearly. So it is one of the dangerous phenomena. Okay, so I have written some 
important points related to transboundary. Please pause the video and recollect some information from this slide. That is more than sufficient. Okay. Anyway, you have to manage within the particular stipulated time. So no need to go for in-depth. At least you should have a brief skeleton uh, about, about this topic. That is my suggestion. That is regarding question number 9B. Now I'll be moving on to question number 10A. Let us focus on question number 10A. Yeah. Discuss pollution prevention opportunities in pulp paper and sugar mills. If you explain the pollution prevention opportunity for pulp paper industry, you will be getting 5 marks. And uh, if you focus more on sugar mills, definitely another 5 marks will be allocated. Moving on to 10A. So please focus on question number 10A. Yes, I'll be moving on 10A. So initially I have explained the paper and pulp industry. So you have to mention about what are the various sources of waste generation. Uh, and because you are dealing with the paper and pulp industry, waste management, wa water treatment, how they are treating the water, waste water treatment, how they segregate the waste, uh, what about the chemical recovery? For example, you have to explain about soda process. If you have some chemical equation, try to add soda process, which you studied in your chemistry. Then good housekeeping is also one of the essential thing to minimize the waste as much as possible, as minimum as possible. Uh, then uh, the 3R concept, reduce, reuse, recycle concept. Then primary treatments such as coagulation and flocculation. Okay. Then biological treatments like uh, oxidation bond, trickling filter, all the things you have to explain very briefly uh, regarding the uh, paper industry. I request everyone to highlight this point in your answer book. That is mandatory. And you try to underline these points in your answer book. Then I have explained wastewater generation, reason for wastewater generation, uh, then pulping and bleaching process then stock preparation, what are the process involved, different type of uh, sources of wastewater generation. These are the different sources of wastewater generation. This also you can add in your answer book. Then regarding the sugar industry, uh, there are different mechanisms uh, to check uh, the proper adequate movement of water flow. For example, sealed flow meter to measure the discharge meter cube per seconds and maintain the proper logbook and uh, that history to identify what about the contaminants which is eliminating outside, what about the pollutant uh, water which is going to move on to nearby water bodies. Likewise, there is a log book is mandatory. That is another strategy to minimize the pollution. And uh, dry cleaning. This kind of log book and all will be really useful during the auditing purpose. Okay. Documentation is very important. Similarly, different type of uh, uh, units like a condensation, polishing unit, then effluent uh, treatment plant, near STP plant, nearby uh, every institution there should be uh, the water purification plant is also available. So likewise, the effluent treatment plant is very important for sugar industry. These are the few points which I could highlight you regarding different opportunities in sugar industry to minimize the excess of water, to minimize the water pollution and to uh, collect the data we require logbook. Likewise, you have to point out each, each segments and definitely uh, you will be getting another five marks. So please go through this. And uh, kindly uh, note down whichever the points are very essential, you can uh, note down. I already explained, but still this is a detailed information. Please pause the video once, kindly note down. Okay, that is more than sufficient. I'll wait for a while. Yes, so you can move ahead. Then question number 10B. Let us move on to question number 10B. So where is question number 10B? I'll be showing you the question paper once again. Yes, question number 10B. Write a note on hazardous waste classification and characteristics. This is very, very important uh, topic. Nowadays, all should be aware about this kind of waste. Waste management is a challenging issue from every every place. Every If you go for every type of company, waste management is a challenging issue. Uh, municipality is also suffering a lot for waste management. Uh, okay. So now let us move on to the discussion of a different type of waste. I request everyone to give a brief introduction about hazardous waste. They are asking about hazardous waste. No, you please provide, you can provide a brief introduction. Hazardous waste is defined as any substance or material that can have a harmful effects on the health of people and the environment. Hazardous waste are basis of the biological, it may be in form of chemical and it is having the physical property. Like that, you can mention the properties also. Now, uh, do one thing. It is advisable to draw one flow chart like this. I think I will I'll use the pointer, uh, mainly hazardous waste. It is divided into four types. First one is called a listed waste. Second one is called as characteristic waste. Third one is called as universal waste. Ultimately, mixed waste. You prepare a flow chart and as, write down the subclassification. In the listed type, F list is there, K list, P list, like that. 
Similarly, characteristic based also you can see the subclassification. Likewise, if you mention now, it will be really grateful to evaluate it because I am also one of the evaluators for the university examination. So it will be really helpful as a point of evaluator. I'm telling if the students are following everything in a point by point wise, it will be really helpful to identify whether the students is caliber or not, whether the students know the concept or not. The what about we can measure the knowledge level. Okay, fine. So please follow up. Listed based. So you have to mention where is the source of listed based? How the classification? It is divided into subclassification, F list, K list, P list, etc. You have to explain about F list. So where is the it is a basically non-specific type of source. We cannot uh, judge exactly. Okay. So you have to mention about uh, the F list are uh, formulating from manufacturing unit, different type of uh, manufacturing, etc. So like that you have to mention. Similarly, you have to mention about uh, seven subgroups of F list waste, like uh, dioxin uh, bearing waste, wood preserving waste, spent solvent waste. Like that, you can prepare the petroleum refinery waste water. Likewise, you can prepare the subclassification if necessary. Similarly, K waste is also very important. Uh, unlike K, uh, F list, F list waste, K waste are specific waste, where F list waste are non specific, but K list waste are specific waste. So, uh, the main sources like uh, sludges, wastewater, these are the major sources of K waste that you have to mention where it is originating. Similarly, there are 13 industries which will be generating K list waste. For example, iron and steel production, petroleum refining, uh, then explosive manufacturing, uh, ink formulation, veterinary pharmaceuticals manufacturing. These are the different sources, at least the five to six you can mention. Fine. Uh, similarly, P list and U list is also very important. Uh, these are basically specific type commercial and non-commercial products. Okay, it is uh, derived from commercial and non-commercial products. Fine. Uh, the character then another type of waste is known as characteristic waste. So these are uh, based on the identification process depending on the characteristics they are uh, displayed. Below are four type of uh, characteristic waste. So it is having one type ignitability and like a flammable type material, corrosivity easily getting corroded. And the pH value is also mentioned. It, uh, it, is, uh, it may be equal or less than 2 pH or equal to or greater than 12 pH. The first one is 2 pH means highly acidic. 12.5 uh, uh, pH means uh, highly basic. What is pH? Potence hydride. Okay, to measure the uh, acidity or basicity, we'll be having a pH scale. It varies from 0 to 40. Fine. Where 7 is called as neutral. Reactivity. Okay, then toxicity. These are the subclassification of characteristic waste. Similarly, universal waste. So, commonly generated waste are known as universal waste. Uh, there are different classes like uh, 1 to 9 classes. Class 1, explosive. Class 2, gases. Class 3, flammable type material. Class 4, flammable solid or substances. And uh, class 9, miscellaneous, dangerous type material. These are the different classes of universal waste. Kindly remaining those uh, categories like uh, 1 to 9, how they are classified. Similarly, mixed waste, it, uh, it includes both the uh, hazardous waste and the radioactive type waste. So kindly uh, may, may highlight these points, which I mentioned, separate uh, marker by using the red marker I have made out. So kindly follow up exactly. Uh, and also you please draw the flow chart necessary, wherever the diagram, wherever the flow diagrams are available, wherever the flow chart you can make out. Everything you try to add uh, your answer book neatly. So these are the uh, third part of the question paper, which is which is concluding uh, the question paper discussion. So if time allows, let me start with the important questions of this particular subject. So if you follow the same strategy, I'm damn sure that you can get 90 plus. There is no doubt in that. This question also uh, frequently, if you revise or if you practice, you can uh, write it neatly in the in the if, uh, in the examination if similar kind of questions are repeated. So, uh, if time permits, let me upload another video as soon as possible. Thank you for listening me patiently. Thank you very much for watching this video. I wish you all the very best for your examination. Thank you all.